<laughs> right. Uh, I mentioned playing. Daredevil 168. I know when Matt went, first dropped, he asked, but where do I read Daredevil? Um, so I'm going to just quickly share. This is the next issue. Um, just I'm going to cut this out for a uh, for a video. Um, so this was the next issue, Frank Miller. So again, for those of you who not, didn't catch the whole spiel from me, uh, Frank Miller is my favorite creator. He's part of the reason I ended up in comic books and he was doing Daredevil. This is back in the day. Um, he came out with issue 168 on January 1st, 1981. He started off in 1981 in uh, amazing fashion. He got total control of Daredevil at that point. He basically was writer and artist. So f during 1980, he was dabbling with a little bit of both, a little bit of art, a little bit of writing, back and forth. But at 168, he introduced Elektra. It's this phenomenal episode, uh, this episodic sort of standalone comic book. It has a beginning and an end. Very powerful. I do a spoiler review that drops tomorrow. Uh, this is the next issue. I will not go through every single thing with you because I don't want to, you know, drive you guys super, super crazy um, and ruin it for you if you don't want to. Uh, but basically, this is where he, because he's done a little bit of Bullseye. Bullseye is very, has, has been a very cheesy character. And this is where Miller gets a hold of Bullseye and really makes him the foil. And this is very much. Um, a standard staple Frank Miller tactic and, and style here. You see how the TVs are. See how there's no framing comic book panels. This is what we saw and we loved with Dark Knight Returns that happens literally many years later. Except, well, so not many. Several years later, right? When he takes over Bat the Batman Dark Knight Returns. Completely different style. But see, he's basically, he gives you this TV talk show backstory of Bullseye. Very smart. Oh, and by the way, this is Matt Burdock here in the chair. Let's see if we make it big. There's Matt Burdock. And then we find out that Bullseye is on the loose. And then Burdock just disappears in the chair. That's at the end of that last little shot. So then we have our splash page. And there's tons of people dressed up as Daredevil. Or so it appears. And you end up with like this murder spree. With, and what we find out is sort of this backstory of Bullseye. And he has basically, long story short, brain tumor. He's hallucinating, seeing Daredevil everyone because Daredevil is the one guy who beat him. Daredevil can dodge his weapons. And, th and they're going through this excruciating detail in this scene. So this is Miller crafting a more complicated origin story for Bullseye, elevating Bullseye to be a very formated for, uh, formidable foil for Daredevil. And then finding ways for Daredevil to still come out on top. So the entire episode, and this is the type of art, he moves back and forth with his colors. He um, creates a lot of uh, conflict and motion in his panels. Like, look at these panels. We don't get a lot of this in modern comic books. I know people will go, well, there's not a lot of detail. Well, there is a lot of detail. These two char these characters are here on the far left. It doesn't look like there's much to them. But they're drawn exactly the same way throughout the entire issue. So you learn about who they are and what they do and what they, what they have as, as these sort of like extras in the story. Note, note, note the motion here to the right, motion to the left. Here's those two characters I'm talking about. So you get a little bit more look at who they are. So everything tends to flow with his work. It's just, it really is very unique and definitely was unique for its time. And I wasn't reading comic books when this came out. This is what I ended up into uh, starting with his other work in Batman and then finding his work in Daredevil. But this is the second issue he has full control of. He basically creates now an arch nemesis, sort of a Joker type level character. And you see them going hand to hand with how they, they can, they can, you know, one can defeat the other one gets the upper hand and you get, you get a little bit of both. You get, you get, you get, you know, here, here's there, uh, you know, Daredevil, Daredevil gets the upper hand, and then, oh, no, wait, no, he doesn't. Uh, Bullseye actually gets him. He, he falls down. So there's lots of little nuances that Miller plays with here. And you do get a very brief cameo. Uh, Electra does show up, and she's going to Matt's apartment because she's finally reminiscing about them having uh, some sort of relationship. And there's obviously a lady there. Here she is. So, and then Electra disappears and, you know, so story moves along with, uh, you know, what we're going to do with Bullseye. 
And that's pretty much how this episode goes. Um, very, very smart writing. I, I don't even know what to tell you. It's just, it's just every little thing. Nothing's wasted. Times are not wasted. This is Daredevil listening. This is like stuff that we used in the TV show. Like how does he, con he concentrates softer sounds murmur to him from a thousand separate sources. So he can hear the TV show. He can hear the steam coming off this, uh, this uh, coffee pot, teapot. He can hear the tick tock and the alarm going off on this, this person's clock. He's got to, you know, he's got to tune out dripping faucets and uh, flapping uh, blinds, a person coughing, right? Oh, wait, that's who he's looking for, right? Brilliant, brilliant rewrite of Daredevil. Instead of some of the cheese and the silliness, he gets a lot more complicated and dark and edgy. And of course, then you get into the big fight scene here near the end of the issue that culminates with basically both like almost winning because um, they're near a subway. And of course, the sounds and stuff are going to mess up with his echolocation uh, type uh, skill set. And then you end up with this incredible climax. I'm not going to spoil it because I am on a live stream, but I would if I did a video of what happens here where they're on this thing is the subway cars coming towards them. So uh, great issue. Great comics. I've said jump in at 168. You're not going to be disappointed because uh, 168 will definitely uh, keep going. 169 is about Bullseye. And then there's a three story arc uh, issue there with the uh, Kingpin. And you have Bullseye in it, but it's mostly it's about Kingpin. And elevate again, elevating Kingpin, bringing Kingpin back into relevance. A lot of this was very much the source material for what made Daredevil such a great TV show. So. There we go. Uh, that's spectacular, Frank Miller. Yeah, it is. It is. I don't say it's different. It's just he he didn't care about some of the rules. He broke a lot of rules. He wrote them. His art it, at times is not very good. His art is not consistent at times. I don't know. There's something about it that just, uh, I don't know. It's really, really good. So, oh, Bobby brings up the fact that there is a documentary on Tubi. You know what? I need to do a like a either like a like a almost like a reaction video or something on that yeah that's a great call i'm right i need to write that down thanks thanks bobby that's very good very kudos to you man i need to write that down i'm all about promoting crap on tubi anyway because it's free